everybody, this is Ali Madonna with another edition of The Professors. Today's special guest is Senior Professor of History here at Iona, George Bornutian. Thank you for joining us today. You are very welcome. It's my pleasure. I want to start off, so a couple weeks ago, all the news surrounding Russia had to do with the Sochi Olympics, more of a positive impact. Now, all of a sudden, we're dealing with this crisis in Russia and the Ukraine. So what a transformation within a couple of weeks. Well, if, yes, you're absolutely correct. There, w there is a sudden transformation, but this has been brewing up for some time. Uh, the Sochi Olympics itself were controversial, as you very well know. Mm -hmm. Putin campaigned to get the Olympics into Sochi. He wanted to show the world that uh, a renaissance, Russia is coming back from the days of 1991 when it was down in the pits during the presidency of Yeltsin. The economy was bad, everything was falling apart. So this is the face of the new Russia he wanted to show to the world. Uh, the choice of the city, in my opinion, they could have had a better place, a colder place. Sochi is a small village. I visited it a number of times. The first time I went was 1977, when I was very young. And Sochi was a small resort town for Russians who went in the summer to the beach. Uh, the snow is only in the mountains, it's not the rest, and even that is not guaranteed. But overall, despite all the dire predictions of terrorism and problems, Sochi Olympics, according to even Western, an American newscaster, was a success. Mm -hmm. And Russia got m the most of the medals. Mm -hmm. So they were extremely pleased with it. Right. Unfortunately, the Ukrainian issue has been brewing for some time. Mm -hmm. The main problem with the Ukrainian issue, it's not just the Ukrainian issue. We have to go back. You have to go back to the, f the start of the Soviet Union. Russian Empire in the old days went all the way from the Sea of Japan to almost three quarters of Poland. That was the Russian Empire. Twelve time zones. It was the only empire in the world which truly the sun never set. Because when it came out in the end of the Sea of Japan, it would set in Poland. It was a gigantic, multinational, multicultural, multi-ethnic empire. The Russian czars, most of them, after Peter and Catherine, and especially in the 19th century, forced Russification on the people. They wanted everybody to speak Russian. The official language was Russian. Everything was published in Russian. Non-Russians were encouraged to change their last name into Russian-sounding names. So Armenians, who usually end in I-A-N, Burnutian, became Burnutov, O-F or O-V. So same with the Muslims, same with the, uh, many people. Once the revolution occurred and the Russian Empire collapsed, one of the main promises of the communists in order to attract all these minorities that were so many of them, was to promise the major minorities mm -hmm. their own constituent autonomous republics in the new federal Soviet Union, United Soviet Socialist okay. Republics. Fifteen eventually emerged. In addition to that, there were autonomous zones for minor groups within the big republics, autonomous zones. So this worked, and affirmative action started. They were the first people to start affirmative action. We were not. Mm -hmm. They made sure that Armenians, Ukrainians, etc., were represented on television, in the arts, in the medals, mm -hmm. in everything. This inclusiveness. It wasn't 100% successful. Russian was still the main dominant. As it is, it hasn't been successful in the U.S. either. English is still the dominant language. I mean, we're trying for exclusivity and doing all of that, but down deep, it's the right. English speaker, Anglo-Saxon culture that predominates in the Senate and everywhere else, and in our culture, in our television programs, most of them. We're trying to bring others in, okay. but that's new. So you mentioned these autonomous territories. Obviously, Crimea is the one that's been yes. most talked about right now. Yes. What is so significant about this territory and its location? Well, the problem with the Crimea is that it was taken by Catherine the Great in 1783 from the Turks, from the Ottoman Turks. 
It became part of Russia a long time ago. Russians began living there. Uh, and uh, it was the headquarters of the Russian Imperial Fleet of the Black Sea. And it continued to be the headquarters of the Russian Black Sea Fleet all through the Soviet era. And so uh, all, it was in 1954, Prime Minister Khrushchev, who was Ukrainian himself, and since Soviet Union was not a democracy, he could make a ruling like that. He and his small gang around him, most of them Ukrainians in the political bureau, decided in 54 to give a gift of Crimea, which was always part of Russia. It never was autonomous. It was part of the Russian Republic out of those 15. As a gift to Ukraine for the 300th anniversary of Ukrainian-Russian brotherly love, one of these Soviet big politically correct slogans. Nobody thought that one day the Soviet Union will collapse. Mm -hmm. They assumed, but to safeguard it, they made it an autonomous region. Okay. So yes, under Ukraine, but autonomous, because majority of the population was Russian mm -hmm. to this day. And so what happened, unfortunately, when the Soviet Union fell apart, Ukraine now, a separate country, claims Crimea as well. Right, autonomous, five, right. yes. But Soviet fleet is there, Russian fleet, sorry, is there. Mm -hmm. So Russia pressured Ukraine, and they got a 40 or 30 year, I don't know the exact number of years, agreement to keep their fleet there as lease and to pay Ukraine money so Russia could have a fleet there because Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So this was fine for a while, but the problem was the fall of the Soviet Union allowed the United States, I'm not saying anything bad about the U.S., but allowed the U.S. to extend its hegemony, its powerful hegemony over a lot of the parts that were Poland, Prague, now we are, they became very pro-Western, all of them. The reason is they hated Russia, they hated communist Russia, and they even hated the imperial Russia for what it had done. So it was very easy to drag them away from the Soviet Union, and they, many of them have become member of NATO, especially Poland. Mm -hmm. Putin is different. Yeltsin came, Yeltsin was weak. Putin, Putin resurrected Russia. Russia is now very powerful again. Russia has this, Russia has that, Russia has great military, Russia has great nuclear weapons. P Putin decided enough is enough. We have to come back to become a world player. But he looks back at the map, you have to look geopolitically. You have to look at Putin's side. Not that he's right, right, but put yourself on his side. He's looking at the map. Poland, which is within striking distance of Russia, is member of NATO. Mm -hmm. There is talk that the Americans want to put missiles in Poland. Not against Russia, of course not. Well, he doesn't believe that. Right. It's against Iran, which is childish. Mm -hmm. Iranian missiles. Poland, look at the map. Mm -hmm. In order for Iranian missiles to reach even Europe, and Europe has its own defense systems, they don't need American missiles. Uh, it's a miracle that they could even hit anything. They would never reach the United States. So as far as Putin is concerned, the missiles are against Russia mm -hmm. one day to put Russia in check. And now Poland is bad enough. Now Ukraine also wants to go closer mm -hmm. to Europe and become part of the European Union, etc., etc., which means in the long run, Euro, in the long run, maybe NATO, and that's smack next to it. We, we are worried about little Cuba here when we mm -hmm. happened. That's much more yeah. worse. And so for Putin, he tried. He created a president that was, he put pressure on the president. Don't sign the European agreement or else I'm going to cut the gas. And that's really what started all of the crisis. All the crisis. Ukraine, because if Russia uprising. stops the gas, mm -hmm. Ukraine will freeze to death. Mm -hmm. And Europe will not get oil. oil we is have to talk about the European gas crisis yeah, that's gas looming crisis. already. The pipeline goes right through Ukraine. Yeah, so but this it, has the, huge implications. But the source is in Russia. Yes. It doesn't matter where it goes through. All he has to do is to turn it off. And so the president, therefore, said no to Europe. Mm -hmm. He agreed. Now, some people, not the majority, People in U Crimea and eastern Ukraine are all Russian. They are not interested in what's happening in Kiev. Some groups in Kiev were upset that this bothers Ukrainian sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that some people from Europe and even the United States push them and help them? We will never know. Right. Suddenly this mob comes in, starts burning things mm -hmm. right at the worst time during the Olympics. Okay? 
And so the president escapes. So Putin says this is an illegal coup d'etat. Mm -hmm. And there's questions of this being now a legitimate Yeah, government. and the government there, he says, is not legitimate. Why don't they have a vote and elect another guy? If he thinks that if you have a total Ukrainian vote, parts of Ukraine, the Russian part, will be against it. Mm -hmm. So in Crimea, and the danger was, if you were, saw the pictures in, on the real, not our news, our news doesn't show a lot. The people who were burning things in Kiev, they're also burning Russian flags. And a few of them went around saying, nobody should speak Russian anymore. The national language should be Ukrainian. Well, the Russians who are living in Ukraine, it's suddenly, you know, it's like suddenly saying, nobody can speak English anymore. We have to all speak Spanish in this part of the United States because we're separate. Well, the reaction of Washington would have been very nervous if somebody mm -hmm. does that in Texas. We'll immediately send troops. Mm -hmm. So the same thing, Putin immediately said, I'm, all I'm doing is I'm protecting the Russian minority in Crimea since it's autonomous and since they called me to help. So you do think he had a right to invade and to be there? From the Russian point of view, yes. Okay. From the American point of view, obviously, no. From the Russian point of view, certainly from the Russian military, not just Putin, mm -hmm. from the Russian military, from the Russian bases, from the Russian geopolitical and military point of view, security point of view, Russia had no choice. Okay. Because Turkey is member of NATO, mm -hmm. Poland is member of NATO, all you have to do is to look at the map. Mm -hmm. Black Sea, this side is Turkey. If Ukraine also becomes member of NATO and the Black Sea goes with it, Crimea, the Black Sea goes with it, Russian fleet is nothing. It's useless there. So Russia has lost the entire geopolitical power. Mm -hmm. From the United States point of view, we were hoping, down deep, we're not saying it, but from the U.S. point of view, our military likes to see a weaker Russia. It's obvious. Mm -hmm. Why not? Right. It makes us stronger. So all the rest of it is Ukrainian rights, etc. It's just, uh, it's just word of place. Down deep, we want our position strong. They want their position strong. He is using uh, poor Russians are being discriminated against, etc. I'm saving there. We're using poor Ukrainians, etc. Right. Now, President Obama has come under a lot of scrutiny for being indecisive, a little bit wishy-washy, and not being hard enough on Putin. Would you? stand on that side of it or do you think the measures he's taken have been? No, he's the only thing he can do. The only other thing he can do is uh, invade mm -hmm. or send military aid to Ukraine. That's war. Right. But what's he going to what do? What would be the implications of a no, war right no, now? No, Just no. catastrophic. It's not even, he's not going, nobody right. will do it. Europe will not allow it because right. it affects Europe much more than mm -hmm. it affects us. Uh, sanctions, yes. Okay. He can do sanctions. But most of Europe already has indicated, the Italians, the Germans, that they're not going to go with full sanctions because they need Russian gas, right. Russian oil.